Good day. I am Dr. Richard Louis at the UC Davis Pointe Care Technology Center. My presentation describes the effect of environmental stresses on pointe care testing and its impact on clinical decision making, then concludes by highlighting the need for creative products to thermally protect pointe care test reagents. Disaster needs assessment surveys, focus groups, and direct interviews indicate that acute myocardial infarction increases dramatically following earthquakes and other disasters. Acute myocardial infarctions may not be adequately diagnosed in a field where traditional laboratory testing is not available. Pulmonary care tests can be mobilized to fill this need. However, we have new experimental results showing that environmental stresses can alter the performance of cardiac biomarker immunoassays during rescue and therefore can affect clinical decision making. At the end of this presentation, you will be able to describe the effects of temperature and humidity stresses on the performance of point of care cardiac biomarker tests in a simulated rescue, understand how these effects can alter clinical decision making, and learn how to solve the problem so that point of care testing can transcend environmental limits at sites of crisis care outside hospitals. Approximately 70 disasters and 15 complex crises occur worldwide annually, affecting about 65 million people. Complex crises are long-term man-made disasters that threaten the lives and livelihoods of populations Examples include civil war, terrorism, international war, and industrial accident, accidents like the nuclear accident in Japan. Point of care tests can be useful in crises for the triage and diagnosis of acute and chronic diseases. Here are some examples of recent disasters and their challenges. In the Haiti and Christchurch earthquakes, numerous crush injuries occurred, where point of care Blood electrolyte monitoring could have been useful for detecting electrolyte abnormalities such as hyperkalemia. Limb amputations were common. Studies suggest that brain natriuretic peptide testing could be a useful biomarker for predicting risk of cardiac events and mortality following emergency orthopedic surgery. In Hurricane Katrina, victims suffered due to the lack of diabetes monitoring supplies. When supplies were available, they proved to be ineffective because of the environmental stress effect. Acute and chronic monitoring with point care testing would mitigate excess mortality and morbidity. Now I want to address point of care cardiac biomarker testing and its role in triaging victims with chest pain. Traumatic events increase emotionally triggered acute myocardial infarction immediately following crises. For example, Chest pain could not be diagnosed effectively during Hurricane Katrina and the Great, Great Bangkok Flood of 2011. Of note, cardiac diseases disproportionately affect native Hawaiians and other Pacific Islanders. The mortality is 1.7 times higher than Caucasians. Timely diagnosis of acute myocardial infarctions and therapeutic action are necessary to improve outcomes. We have conducted new experiments to evaluate the effects of environmental stresses on the performance of point care cardiac biomarker tests during a simulated rescue from Hawaii to the Marshall Islands and back. Will point care tests work outside of the hospital? Here are the conditions experienced by emergency responders in recent disasters. In New Orleans, Temperature reached 43.3 degrees Celsius, which is about 110 degrees Fahrenheit, with relative humidity approaching 100%. And in Japan, temperature fell to negative 5 degrees Celsius. Dynamic temperature and humidity fluctuations during storage, transport, and rescue can affect test results. Extreme conditions occur seasonally in various geographic locations and are not necessarily linked to disaster. Diagnostic tests available to disaster medical assistance teams include blood gases, whole blood electrolytes, 
glucose, cardiac biomarkers, and tests for infectious diseases. Here we list the manufacturer, storage, and operating specifications. Some test reagents require refrigeration, defined as 2 to 8 degrees Celsius. The Allier triage test cars can be stored at room temperature for up to two weeks with operating temperature of 20 to 24 degrees Celsius. The conditions in the field can readily exceed these specifications. Here is our experimental workflow. The purpose, purpose of our environmental stress testing studies are to help characterize the effect of environmental stresses on the performance of point care tests, to describe the effect on clinical decision making, and to describe the need and lead the development of creative solutions and point care products that will improve the preparedness and enhance the crisis standards of care. Reagent test cards are placed into the environmental stress testing chamber. The 10 et 2 rc is shown. The chamber is programmed to produce a dynamic temperature and humidity profile. At designated time points, results obtained from stress test cards are compared to results from peer control at room temperature. We also developed dynamic weather profiles during Hurricane Katrina Please see our 2012 paper in Disaster Medicine and Public Health Preparedness. We worked with our Hawaiian partners to develop an air rescue profile from Hawaii to the Marshall Islands and back using a fixed wing aircraft. The 24 hour profile consists of six hour flights from and to Hawaii and a 12 hour ground rescue in the Marshall Islands. We used surface data from the National Climate Data Center to simulate the ground rescue conditions. The temperature on ground reached 33.9 degrees Celsius, which is about 93 degrees Fahrenheit. Stress cards and the paired control were tested at seven designated time points, two occurring on the flight out, three during the ground rescue, and two on the return flight. We stressed a layer triage test card, which measures cardiac troponin I, brain natriuretic peptide, CKMB, myoglobin, and D-dimer. Elevated troponin I suggests acute myocardial infarction, and BNP, brain natriuretic peptide, congestive heart failure. Cardiac troponin I is released from cardiomyocytes when injured by ischemia. Cardiac troponin is detected in the blood by monoclonal antibodies to molecular, molecular epitopes. BNP is secreted in response to stretching by heart muscle, such as in congestive heart failure. The triage employs monoclonal fluorescence immunoassay. We compared point of care triage test card results obtained during the stress profile to paired control results at room temperature using quality control reagent human plasma samples at each time point. Paired differences, stress minus control, were analyzed using Wilcoxon signed rank tests and students, students t-tests for paired differences. Significance was indicated by an asterisk with p less than 0.05 and two asterisks for P of less than 0.01. Non-parametric and parametric analysis agreed. We evaluated the effect on clinical decision-making using the product insert, Joint European Society of Cardiology Task Force recommendations, and peer review publications. Here are the results. The bar graph reports troponin I median pair differences and median stressed test card results at the seven time points. The dashed lines indicate clinical decision-making thresholds. The thresholds, thresholds are stratified into normal, suggestive of myocardial infarction, and alert for possible myocardial infarction. The zero along the x-axis indicate median pair difference of zero. The expected cardiac troponin value was 
0.08 nanograms per milliliter. We did not observe significant hair difference measurement between stressed and unstressed test cards during the flight out, time points T1 and T2. However, during the ground rescue, we found 36.7% of stressed test cards reported falsely low troponin results that would have been interpreted as normal. Two, two of these values were highly discrepant that is, the stressed cards reported a normal value less than 0.05 nanograms per milliliter, while the control reported an alert value greater than or equal to 0.1 nanograms per milliliter. During the return flight at time point 7, stressed test cards reported falsely elevated median cardiac troponin I of greater than 0.1 nanograms per milliliter which at our institution represents an alert value for possible acute myocardial infarction. Other biomarkers were affected as well. Of note, one stressed test card reported BNP lower by 54 pic picogram per milliliter during the ground rescue at time point four when 112 picogram per milliliter was expected. Despite modest short-term, that is 4 to 12 hour temperature elevation, environmental stress led to erroneous results. False negative cardiac troponin I and brain natriuretic peptide results can miss acute myocardial infarction and congestive heart failure, and it can confound treatment and increase mortality and morbidity. False positive cardiac troponin I results can trigger unnecessary cardiac interventions that waste already limited rescue resources. Therefore, thermal protection is needed to ensure stability of point care tests in any situation where, where it may be used. Our partners at Western New England University and at the Research Triangle Institute International are developing these solutions with us. To conclude, I want to share with you our new paper. We published our strategic roadmap that explains how to enhance crisis standards of care using innovative point of care testing in the American Journal of Disaster Medicine. This paper identifies strategies with tactics that enable point of care testing to effectively improve outcomes in emergencies disasters, and public health crises, especially where community infrastructure is compromised. These tactics include hardened point of care devices and reagents that withstand wider ranges of environmental extremes in field applications, sealed reagents in portfolio to protect from environmental extremes, controlling temperature and humidity to which point care test reagents and devices are exposed to, and establishing near-patient testing in defined environments that operate within current Food and Drug Administration licensing claims. I want to thank you for your attention. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach me by email at pocttcenter at ucdavis.edu.